July. Uh, as you can see, I'm down here harvesting my peas. I've just come down for a bit of a check what these needed doing. So, I'm picking this side. I need to go on the other side and pick that yet, which will be a bit difficult because me Duke York first day is behind there. So I'm just having like a second run through this side because you always miss some. And uh, obviously once you take a lot of pods away, a lot of the energy will be diverted to the remaining pods. So uh, over the space of a few weeks, you tend to get them all off. So I need to think about sowing some more pretty soon. I think that's about all I'm going to get off this side for now. I'll have missed some, I guarantee it, because that's how I'll come down in probably three or four days and have another pick. See what I can find. And then I'll just basically remove the whole whole lot of the plants in a couple of weeks and get it ready for the next batch. So, uh, so I've got a bucket full so far. It's quite time consuming, but I've eaten a few as well. So uh, have a look at the other side. As you can see, I've got to get in there, try and pick some of them. So if I walk down in between the, uh, carefully between along there and try and pick some of them out. We shall see what we get off them. Won't be as many as the other side, but uh, I'll probably miss a few because I can't see them. But I'm hoping to get these potatoes out um, pretty soon. There'll be some in this video, as I say, I'll, do it. I'll be down in a few days to kind of do add a bit more to this video. So I'll have a what I'll get from the peas. Right, so I've got uh, a 10 litre bucket and that's full of pods, and that one's probably three quarters or two thirds full. So uh, not bad for a first pick. Bit time consuming, and you've got to pot them and whatnot. After I will be blanching and also be freezing, but I'll save a few fresh. Um, have a quick look in fruit cage because I've planted some purple sprout and broccoli. Kind of shifted these cabbage together down this end, and uh, down there, there's seven purple sprout and broccoli. I just put like about two or three inches of that compost on top just to make a ridge because obviously it's going to be in here a while so I don't want to get in too wet on the roots just to raise it up a bit. I've had a mole in here so uh, the blueberries will be all finished before um, that gets up to any height hopefully because they're starting to just sort of colour a little bit now so I should imagine another week or two blueberries will start coming ready. The old dwarf French beans are rooted in and they're growing okay as with the corn at the back. So that's enough for today I'm going to get home and uh, Come back in a few more days and maybe dig up some potatoes. Right, I'm going to dig these Duke of Yorks up. Um, I forgot my microphone like an idiot, so uh, I'll just film probably some of these and then uh, so I'm going to dig the whole roll up, I think. We've had about 11 weeks, I think, so they are not died back, but there should be some on. I don't need to clear this area to obviously get up the peas, so, you know, um, and also them swift potatoes, I've probably used most of them, to be honest, so they've got many left. Um, they don't last long in our house, so. Um, I'll just video off you digging a few up and then I'll get on my rest of the roll and then um, we'll have a look back. But if they are really small, I'll probably have to leave some for a while longer. So it's just a case of uh, where do you start, you know, tuck in somewhere. A lot of white fly, don't we? Also, there's a blight on this in yet, yeah, which is always good. It's not raining, that's always better. Keep these jazzies at bay. Not tromping on them too much because they've only got a couple of weeks. Alright, so let's see how many I can stab. I'll keep that, uh, I'll pull the cane out of the way. 
There we go. Yeah, well, we're done. That's good. Take it up. Pretend the worm coming out of it. A few small ones, but I don't mind. Massive, but like I said, uh, first early is okay. So we're in the bits on the small side, like them, but right, we're adding potato salads. I think it's kind of uh, using pretty quick because they start sprouting otherwise. Go through it, and then I'll give it a second go through just to make sure I've not missed any volunteers. But yes, yeah, so that's the first couple of plants. I don't want them massive. Alright, I'll get on with the rest. Clear the tops off first. Right, that's all the Duke York dog. I was just going to take half a row and leave her, the other half for a few days. Uh, but I thought, no, we need to get the peas picked. Um, so I thought I'll pick her a lot up. I could have left her a bit longer because obviously, you know, that some of them are small, they'd have swollen a bit more. But it's the first early, and I don't want that many big ones. Um, because obviously, I've got a lot more to go at. Um, probably another 100 plants, somewhere. Like I think there was 22 plants in all. Um, so it's not going to be a massive weight, but you know, it's filled this. I'm going to weigh them just to just to see. So I want to try and keep a record of how much how many potatoes actually get to grow this year. Um, so I've, I've had I left him like you know another a week or something like that, maybe another couple of pound. Um, Duke York's uh, one of the only first series I find that make really good roast potatoes, which is one of the main reasons why I grow them every year. So. Um, they're not known for being high yield, but like I say, they're just a kind of quick bonus crop just to put down the side of the peas. Um, and then I'm obviously on to the second daily then. So, we'll get these in here. Somehow without tipping them everywhere, just take a few off the top. There's a few with a little bit of scab, but uh, it's 
not, not the best soil on this plot anyway, but um, I'm hoping to put a bit of compost where I've just done these up. Um, not to grow anything in now, uh, but just to start adding to the bed. Right, let's see if I can do this without tipping everywhere. Discount the bag. Bag weighs what? Probably I don't know, three or four ounces. The scale sorted. Twenty one point six six pounds, which is nine point eight two kilos. So, my Swift were better croppers in the bags. Obviously, they're slightly pampered them, they're at home. Um, they're quite exposed here, and you know, they took a long time to actually come up as well here, um, which was a knock on effect. So, I'd kind of say that. It's kind of worked out about the same as growing them in the bags at home as it has here. Obviously at home it was less room, you know, because it was only about seven bags, 20 litre bags. But obviously you've got to buy the compost to put in the bag, but I know I, I use my own compost. So uh, I'd say, you know, you kind of make it up, providing the other ones do okay and the light stays away and they get a chance to swell a bit more. Once you get onto them, I mean the jazzies um, tend to be, you know, on the smaller side, which is why I like them. And then obviously you've got your Charlottes, Maris Piers, Paula and Sarpo Mirrors tend to be a bit bigger. So um, I'm, I'm happy enough for that, to be honest. So we'll just uh, get on with a couple of other jobs. I'm gonna clear my broccoli bed, I'm gonna pull all that out, put a bit of compost on. Then that bed's got like a week or two to get rained on and mellow out a little bit. And then the next batch will be coming up. I've been kind of working out um, what I'm going to bring up for the second run, uh, it probably filled three of the beds, um, and I'm okay with that. You know, I, the cauliflower is still lagging behind a bit. You know, it started. There is a couple of small heads, but I'm going to leave that a couple more weeks. It probably need about three weeks to be honest. Um, but I need the garlic to finish because the dreaded rust has arrived. Uh, not bad, but um, it's the beginning of the end for the garlic. Obviously, because uh, it's it's not f not far off now. Another couple of weeks, it should start to topple. Onions are starting to really plump up now, so uh, it's just a matter of um, everything finishing off, so I can get the, the plants up here to sort of grab that vital leftover part of the season to to, to try and get a decent run to kind of you know even out the bad start early in the year. Um, beans are all growing fine. Full of white fly though. Lots of white fly about this year. I'm black fly at home. Never really had a, any real issues with them, but uh, it's like all of my strawberry plants are covered in white fly. So um, it's a bit of a nightmare. So I'll get the uh, the broccoli bed done, and um, I'll carry this video on another evening. Um, I'll bring the microphone. Um, Cause obviously I forgot it. You know, <laughs> you get all organised, you think you've got everything, and you haven't. So uh, I'll, I'll carry this on on a on another day. So I shall uh, be back then.
Right, it's the uh, 13th of July now, so it's a good few days after I last came because we had nothing but heavy rain. So uh, I put some of the compost on top of this bed. It might be a little bit sort of fresh still, but I'm going to put some more plants in. These are some broccoli, some clapton and some, I think it's killer's old cabbage. Kind of working out what I can put where. And I thought this is the first bed to come ready. So instead of keep watering them because they're going to get pot bound again. So I thought I'll get them in and see how they get on. So... I was going to do a little modification to this bed, but uh, it can wait for now. I don't want to risk sort of taking the net off on a bright sunny day when I've seen a few cabbage whites around, so it's just not worth the risk. So I'm just going to uh, sort of lift this net up and hopefully you'll be able to see everything all right. And I can work out me sort of uh, where I'm putting things. I'm not going to do it as sort of meticulous as I usually do, but probably somewhere near um, there'll be some that are like sort of three across and some that'll be like four across obviously there'll be probably eight rows like there usually is I'll try and get this side of the net out of the way this end I'll just carry on rolling it all up first usually I'd kind of prefer to do this just one half at a time but uh, well, as I'm videoing and I'm here um, I'll just have to uh, have eyes in the back of my head for the old cabbage whites. It only takes one to come in and cause God knows how much aggro. My other clapton are starting to form heads now. Um, slugs are having a good do and all, that look of it. It's the only problem with, you know, and being up here, I can't sort of uh, keep all the slugs in check. I'm just going to try and knock this. A little bit of a knot in this um, net to try and keep it up out of the way. And I'll check if you can see all the bed. Yeah, a few shadows, but you'll get the general gist. Right, so um, I'm going to put the broccoli up that end of the bed. The, the clapton does get a bit taller, but the broccoli will probably be out first. So, you know, it'll romp ahead. It's taller at the moment anyway. And then the cabbage will go down this end. Um, just so I don't cast too much shade over things. Put them there. So I think that one of these is a clapton, so I need to make sure I don't mix them up. Yep, that one, get out of the way. Um, I've only got seven clapton, that's all I had seeds for, so it does have to do. I think there's 15 here, so I'm just kind of working the spacings out, try and get four across. Like so. It's handy actually because I've been there. Uh, it'll probably appear in my next video where I've been storing these seedlings at home. I've, I've actually made a replica of this bed on the patio. Um, so last night I was sort of out working out what I could put where. Because I don't want to throw any plants away. But. Uh, I'm just hoping they don't get too pot bound and dry out because um, it could kind of force them to produce a head earlier than they want. So I just hope you can hear me okay because I have remembered a microphone today. Go for a four. I need to spread these out a bit more yet. I've got a load of cauliflower, I've got some triumphant, um, some optimist, some more of the gold naked cabbage. I thought I'd bring clits all down first because uh, I've uh, never grown that before. And I've got some uh, the gold maker that kind of, well they're going to get picked, some of them today anyway. Sun's out so it's a busy day for tractors because it's all sort of farming land around here. Um, right, I'll spread these cabbage first down here and get your trays out of the way. These are going to go all four across. You can space them a bit wider if you want bigger heads, but um, when you've got a load of cabbage to go at, they don't know what they're like for storing. Um, so it's just a trial thing with these. And then you know, if they do well, then they'll be incorporated into, into me. Uh, varieties for next year obviously i've grown the the quails calabrese 
quite a few times. Um, so I've always found it really good, you know, and Iron Man's done well this year as well. A lot of people grow the Iron Man. I've actually sown some more Iron Man. It's a little bit on the late side, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I think I work this. I'm going to do sort of three, three collies like that. And then I've got a four here. It's a bit of a squeeze for four cauliflower across one of these beds, so I'm not producing, they're not going to produce big heads. Well, like I say, I've got some of the other ones which are more of a, a late winter, well, late autumn, early winter sort of variety, so they're going to be in the bed the longest, so they're going to get quite tall. So I'll get these trays out of the way and then uh, get my trowel and we'll start to start planting up, I think. Right, I've had a bit of a, a reshuffle. I've gone like uh, two rows of four of the cabbage and I've got a three and a four of the clapton and then a three of the calabrese and then three rows of four calabrese. The reason I've done that is to basically uh, give these four um, cauliflower, the clapton, uh, in the middle of two, three rows, just to give them a bit more room, you know, because they're on the diagonal, so to speak, so you get a little bit more room. Um, I've just got to be careful, obviously, because we've got to avoid the sides of the net. So I have had this net off and I've put some um, some poles, which I'll try and remember to show you at the end of the video. Because uh, I usually use bits of cane and all sorts, but I've got some poles that I found just to try out, see what they were like. So I'll show you some of them after. So I guess it's just time to start planting now, really. You know, they are... They were potted on probably a couple of weeks ago, if that. Um, not really much bigger pot to be honest, only one size up and I just turned them so they went like diagonal just to give them like four corner pockets to put some more roots out so they have been a bit stressed the only problem with digging a big root hole out is you're bringing up any seeds and whatnot from down below and there is no drinking straws on these so I'm hoping they get left alone they should a bit more resilient to leather jackets because they've got a bit of root on them and they have been planted deeply in the pots so i don't really have to worry about putting them down too deep but once they get going i can always sort of you know hill them up everything's sort of got about 15 inch square thereabouts to growing which is which is enough really you know unless if you have to you know massive crops but i think you know sometimes it uh Good to have a bit of cover on the ground once the plants get up because um blocks a bit of light off for the weeds but in saying that you could attract slugs because somewhere shaded from so i will be putting slug pellets down because um with the first half of the season not being great i can't really afford to uh, lose too much of this one well, you know, I should have put drinking straws on all that lot really earlier on, you know, when they were smaller, but they'll have outgrown the drinking straws now. Because they've been exposed to outside for well, well over a month now. They've had the wind and everything rocking about all over them, so they should have firmed up a little bit. And I thought, well, we're due for some really hot weather. So while this bed's nice and wet from all the rain we've had, I'll get them in. It's the best chance we've got, really. So I'm just keeping my eyes out for any of the old leather jackets. And these beds are quite firm. So it's... Uh, Bit, of, bit more of that compost on top, so I'm just hoping there's nothing bad in it, but I don't know, there's been a lot of problems this year with, uh, a lot of people have had problems with compost, you know, being contaminated. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit of a joke to be honest. I mean, this is just like green waste, council, council compost, this stuff. I mean, it will come right, you know, in time. But it's, uh, it's nice to be planting again, because I hate looking at bare ground. I'm sure you can hear me okay, because the, uh, I haven't got my little uh, 
wind cover for my microphone. I've got to make a point of keeping me uh, using my kneeling pad because uh, I've been having a bit of problems with my knees. Um, I've got torn cartilages in both knees, so the usual thing you go and get them seen to. They were torn about five, six years ago, but uh, you won't get them seen to. The time it takes after the scan and all that lot, and you, you settle down a bit, so they say, oh, we'll leave it for now. So this last couple of weeks, it's uh, it's been agony. It's eased off yesterday. Well, like I said, I just need to be careful because it doesn't take much to set it off. It doesn't help because of the things I enjoy doing, you know. Gardening, you're on your knees a lot. And I'm a plumber. That's what my job is, so I'm on my knees a lot there and all. I'll probably just get told, you know, change your hobbies and change your career. Well, all right, okay, easy as that. But, uh, right, I'll get on planting these. I'll uh, put it on a time lapse. Right, that's all I'm done. Won't take long. It's actually nice to uh, look at it and think, right, summer's in, growing again. And the bed's actually only been empty for a few days. Well, five days or something like that. You know, I've got a few, very few broccoli spears off the last lot. So, I'm going to give them a water. I'd rather not water them when it's beaming not sunshine, but I might just try and flood it underneath them. And then uh, we'll drop the net back over. And I'm just trying to turn that head a little bit and I'll divert it underneath. Some more watered. So I'll just show you these uh, green, these new poles I've got. Sometimes I use bits of, you know, cane about a foot long. Other times I just have like these old aluminium pipes from the old greenhouses when they rust and they fall to bits. I'll just get out of the wind. So um, I pulled these out and basically I bought some of these. Now. They're a metre long or 900 millimetres or something like that. I think I've got 50 for about 14, 15 quid. They're not the steel, it's plastic coated, but they're hollow. So they will bend a bit maybe, but I just sort of push it in. It gives it that bit there to be a little bit more upright rather than curving too early. I mean, you can use rebar and stuff like that, but it's a bit expensive. So I try to do things on the cheap because some of us don't have the money to spend. So if you can only afford little tiny bits of old canes and fine that's what I've used for years you just use what you've got so I'll uh, drop this net back down now well actually I'll put some slug pellets on I know some people won't like it but that's just the way it is you know I don't use them all the time but the trick is, is don't go mad with them do kind of attract slugs and you need to replenish them so it's pointless putting loads on you know I don't use them all in the back garden much at all really but it's just when things on here 
It's a big field. There's a lot of unkept plots here. Scrap wood everywhere, pots, raised bed edges. It's just an absolute haven for them. So, I know some people won't like me using pellets, but I just don't want to be, I don't mind a bit of crop going to nature, but uh, there's no point doing it if you're going to lose everything all the time. Because everything is against you most of the time, so you just have to uh, try and get the upper hand any way you can. And I can't remember which way my neck goes now. That's it. I do need to replace this cane on the top at some point, really, but we'll see how it holds out. Right, that's it for today. Um, well, for this video, anyway, I'm going to carry on. Uh, probably harvest some cauliflower and uh, have a clean up on the bed. So that'll be in the next video, because this is going to be long enough, this video. It's probably going to be like nearly half an hour, maybe more. You know, but obviously you've seen um, some of the peas, some potatoes and um, it's basically stripping all the old broccoli out and now it's all kitted up again you know so I've got the aquils, calabrese, the clapton cauliflower and the killers all cabbage so we'll just see how they go um, hopefully crop sort of September October um, fingers crossed so I'm just waiting on this collie to come out so I can load this bed up onions and garlic to finish so I can load one maybe both the beds up I don't know how many plants I've got um, because obviously it gets too wet in here when you get to the end of October November it's too wet on here it's just it's terrible you know so obviously next video there might be um, well probably not the next video the video after um, there'll be some more potatoes the jazzies uh, the charlottes so that's going to be probably near the sort of end of the month that video um maybe first week of august we shall see and uh, see how the, the whole blight situation goes because so far nothing's uh, nothing's showing but uh, you never know so i've got to get the rest of these peas out i have sold some more um I, I just i didn't have many left so i just sold what i had in some of the potato compost i got from me um swift reveal I ended up saving some out and i put that in the gutters i thought it's spent but it, it's got enough goodness in it to to get some peas underway so they're sown in the gutters at home. So uh, the next video I might have a bit from here and a bit from the garden. And um, if it's nice enough, I'll get cane out as well. And you can have a look at him munching the lettuce. So uh, that's it for this video. So take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.